Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden. And in this video, I want to talk to you about the best five springtime bulbs you can plant in your garden to attract wildlife. Now, before we go on, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and you will be informed then, of course, when I post every new video so you don't miss a single tip about attracting wildlife to your own garden. So without further ado, I would like to start with my first option and that is these wonderful aconites now you can see they are an absolute blaze of color at the moment through this little woodland border these lovely bright yellow little gems and they really are a splash of color at this time of year it's early february now but they have been flowering for about a week so end of january you can expect to see these fantastic little plants that are really good at pollinators or providing for pollinators should i say which goes without saying all of the suggestions in this video are good so if you don't buy them all don't worry they're not any one particularly better than the other they're all good for wildlife so number one aconites they're great for shade in fact all of the bulbs that I'm suggesting today are great for shade so of course they are or uh, well, they have adapted over the years over the millennia to uh, flower underneath the shade of trees before the trees get their leaves of course so to make the most of that sunlight that's how they have evolved and of course they really do do a great job at uh, providing a splash of color this time of year so number one aconites number two as you can see a few in the background snowdrops now i've already done a video on snowdrops so check that out if you haven't seen it already but snowdrops another really good option of course flowering as early as i believe christmas uh, in some of the south uh, counties you know cornwall places like that nowadays which is crazy just to think that there'd be uh, flowering that early but that's climate change that's what's happening so snowdrops number two great for bees and um, really good as an early pollinator source as i say again great for shade number three is the snake's head fritillary now this is a little bit later flowering usually kind of early april uh, but a fabulous little plant really reminds me of my grand's garden growing up she used to have loads of these that she'd planted through the lawn these lovely little sort of pendunculate um sort of maroony checkerboard uh, heads are just absolutely exquisite one of my favorite wildflowers snake's head fritillary just an absolute joy to look at so get some of those in your garden for sure uh, number four is the bluebell. Well, it wouldn't really be uh, a list of English wildflowers or English bulbs without the bluebell, of course, which is looking absolutely fantastic, usually around the middle of April. They're not up yet, but however, I do have, if you can make out here, some stems of which are coming up already in this little woodland glade. So uh, this is obviously an indicator of an old woodland glade because it's got three of uh, the bulbs mentioned today in it already, uh, which have naturalized over the years. So uh, really, really nice to see. Uh, so bluebells number four, again, they're, they're later on, they're sort of mid-April when they're at their peak. So uh, get some of those in your garden. Really good for butterflies as well. Of course, as soon as we get into um, early spring, um, April in particular, uh, we start seeing the emergence of things like my favourite butterfly, the orange tip. Uh, we've got green vein white, small white, uh, speckled wood, and a lot of these species will actually nectar on bluebell, uh, brimstone as well. So really, really good one for butterflies as we move a little bit further into the spring. Uh, and my final pick, number five for today, uh, is wild garlic, which is a fantastic plant. And you often see it, when you do see it, in droves through the countryside or, sorry, through a woodland glade or, or along maybe a shady hedgerow. Again, really good for shade. Wild garlic is great because you can actually eat every single part of the plant. Uh, not that I have, but, uh, but you can. And um, a really, really good food source for a lot of insects because again, with it being slightly later in its flowering period into April, um, there will be a lot more insects on the wing, of course, but a really good one. And uh, obviously Vel smells ridiculously strong uh, of garlic when you tread on the leaves. It just absolutely is fantastic. Not that I'd advocate going around treading on the leaves of it, but uh, really is a fantastic scent as you walk through a woodland. Um, so just to recap then, we have aconites, snowdrops, bluebells, wild garlic and snakes head fritillary uh, not in the same order but any of those five my top five bulbs for planting in a uh, shady setting or a woodland border or anywhere where you're looking for some early spring color so 
do check out the Wildry Garden website, guys. You can get all of these bulbs now in the green available. Uh, so check that out where we've got some offers on and uh, you can pick up some of these and get them in your garden while they're in the green, while they're in flower and uh, even before they come up. Of course, now is a good time to be planting uh, plants in the green when they're in flower. If it's just the, the bulb, obviously it's better off before Christmas in November time, but this time of year, moving forward, you can buy them in the green. Plant them out in a nine centimeter potted plants. They're great little plants. They've already got their roots established, so uh, it should take very well to a shady setting. So. Thank you very much for watching guys really hope you've enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and give the video a like and i'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon